The recent discovery of gold plates in an archaeological site located in the ancient tomb found in Panama reveals the past of the ancient history of the inhabitants of Panama. In 2011, in Panama, a major discovery was made. A pre-Columbian cemetery was discovered with the remains of bodies, weapons, and artifacts made of gold. The excavation that took place discovered several tombs in multiple levels bathed in gold, making the discovery one of the richest discoveries in America. An analysis of the tombs suggests that the society to which these individuals belonged was following a form of hierarchy organization. Archaeologists first discovered the remains of a chieftain covered in embossed gold breastplates, arm cuffs, bracelets and a belt, as well as more than 2,000 small spheres, arranged in a way that suggests that they were used as a part of a sash. The Davis Museum's team of archaeologists are a mixture of nationalists and international professionals in the area of pre-Columbian artifacts. Archaeological fieldwork is not the romantic treasure hunt sometimes seen in the movies. On the contrary, archaeology is a blend of scientific disciplines requiring methodological attention to procedure and detail. All of our expeditions are staffed by skilled individuals with specialized knowledge. The archaeological team is experienced excavators and specialists dedicated to the discovery of ancient historical relics that contribute personally to the recovery and preservation of our past. The success of an archaeological expedition depends, to a great extent, on the excavation team. Organization is a key factor in the smooth management of the work schedule, and the field director must be able to depend upon the responsive and responsible staff. The Ancient Cave and Tomb of Cacique The amazing story of the discovery of the ancient tomb of Cacique began when Marcos Montezuma, a young Nabe man, was digging a pozo, water well, on a hill and hit a carved rock in the shape of a rectangle slab. As he hit the rock slab with his pick, it made an empty echo sound. At first, Mr. Montezuma thought he hit an old septic tank. He then used his pick to pry open and lift the open rock slab to expose what was unearthed. And to his amazement, he found the tomb of the Cacique. Mr. Montezuma went into the tomb to find ancient relics including ceramic pots filled with animal skins wrapped up with ancient writings and hieroglyphics and gold pieces including a wooden chest gilded covered in gold next to the mummified Cacique, El Quibian Malchia. After, Mr. Montezuma told his friends and families of the discovery and he reported it to the authorities. The tomb of Cacica is in the cave that was sealed at both ends with rocks and mud. Today, the two ends of the cave are open and tourists can enter to discover the hidden mysteries and treasures of an ancient pre-Columbian lost civilization. Stories told by Spanish writers who chronicled the conquest and the ancestral customs that continue on in the indigenous villages in modern Panama are valuable sources of information for learning more about what life was like for these powerful warriors. Panama, a narrow strip of land 700 kilometers long which connects South America with Central America. A full description of some of the specimens we have found so far in the way of ancient metallurgy, the three fascinating coil loops of silver-like straight pins on one side and rounded on the other side like a waning crescent compared as letter T shaped ring. The thickness of each is the 5.5563 millimeters. 
The three fastening coil loops are made of copper with silver plate film onto copper so to make the coil loops appear as silver but they are really made of copper with silver plate over the three loops. The size of each coil loop is 8 inches on the straight side and on the curved side it's 23 inches as a large letter D shape. The plates were sealed with the adhesive made of the latex from the Panama Rubber Tree Castilla Elastica. The plates are fine sheets like thin wafers of parchment but are made of very thin sheets of gold 38 gauge and the adhesive glued between the sheets of gold together was as hard as concrete. This made it nearly impossible to open the sealed plates. We had such a hard time to take each sealed plate apart from another. We had to be so careful not to damage each sheet as we tried to pry apart each sheet sealed together. The sheet of gold sealed together measured in length and egg, in length at 8 inches and in width at 6 inches that looked like a block of petrified wood of 4 inches thick. Each sheet of gold has ancient Demotic and Hebrew writing embossed and into the plate on both sides of each plate. There are three fastening loops of silver-like straight pins on one side and round on the other side, like a winning crescent. There are 912 gold plates that were glued together with latex from Castilla Elastica and weighs 146 pounds. In the area of science, our discoveries must be seen as things only investigated on factual evidence. Archaeologists and anthropologists base our findings and investigations on physical sources by analyzing and comparing that what is held has as credible and recognized by archaeologists around the world. The majority of the archaeologists chosen are Jewish origins. This is because of the specific surrounding defined in tomb 13 excavation site. The museum here in Panama contacts the IAA, Israel Antiquities Authority, and they refer the archaeologists that specialize in ancient Hebrew artifacts. So we're leaving the bead on our way to Vulcan to El Kavian's burial site that was found just a few years ago and is, is a, a very interesting place. Here we are going up the mountains, passing this lovely scenery, lovely scenery. What's that over there? Oh, wow. Uh, anyway, uh, where the uh, tomb was located was on Volcan Baru. Some people know it as Volcan Chiriqui, but it's uh, it's quite a high mountain, over 11,000 feet high. And because Panama is such a thin country, on a clear day on that mountain, you can see both coasts, the Pacific coast and the Atlantic coast as well. It's beautiful, we'll be there shortly. rising above the clouds. So here we are at the cave of the Kasiki Malchia, the tomb actually. This area here was covered in with stones you can see some of the stones here that were covering this hole and they've been removed revealing another entry to the tomb
So here we are at the entrance to Kasiki Maxia's tomb on the other side of the, well, where we were previously. And what happened here was that several years ago, uh, Montezuma, uh, a farm worker named Marcos Montezuma, was digging a well. And he hit some stone that sounded hollow. He thought that he'd struck upon the top portion of a septic tank, uh, but upon discovery, found the Kasiki's tool. So here we are at the eastern entrance to the tomb of Kasiki Machia. There are two entrances. The other side is walled over. It was like a, a wall on the side of a mountain that was covered with stones the Indians had, had concealed the, the tomb. But five or six years ago, a farm worker by the name of Marco Montezuma was digging a well for the property over here. And he struck something that sounded hollow. He thought that it was maybe a septic system. But upon discovery, this is what he found. The tomb of Kaziki Machia. Come with me down into the tomb. We'll look around. We'll see what's down here. The tomb. Come with me. Come on, let's be careful. Hmm. Okay. Ooh, this has to be jade. There were, there were lots of gold pieces uh, found in here too, but um, one of the main universities in the country uh, seemed to have gotten uh, authority to uh, take those away and to protect them you know, somewhere. But this is jade, jade stone. This is beautiful. And further along, Mm. We have urns, ah. and here, look at this, this is beautiful, ah. another one, for his long journey. After the discovery of the ancient tomb, the name given to the archaeological department to label and identify the tomb was Tomb 13. When the ancient Panamanian Tomb 13 was discovered inside the tomb was the sarcophagus of a pre-Columbian king with the name Malchia. Some of the scrolls had been written in ancient Egyptian, Phoenician, and Hebrew languages. The official file registered to this item is Alpac 2B. And this ancient archaeological specimen, dating back around 590 years before Christ, was one of the 30 rows discovered in the excavation site, Tomb 13. It's an animal hide that has been prepared as a writing material in Jewish scribble documents. In particular, a Sefer Torah, or we may call it a Torah scroll. The first Gevel scroll parchment from Tomb 13 translated into English from Egyptian and Hebrew. The Egyptian hieroglyphics make up a Hebrew word, or words, and names. Each Egyptian hieroglyphic is drawn in a method to read in a Hebrew pronunciation letter, so when reading the Egyptian hieroglyphics, it will form Hebrew words and names. Each hieroglyphic is pronounced with a letter. For instance, when looked at the man holding what it seems to be a stick or vase, more like a stick, upright 90 degree angle stick, it forms the letter Y. Spells out the name Jeremiah. If you look at the hieroglyphics, Jeremiah or Almar. After looking at the hieroglyphics, it reads, Jeremiah said, 
Various records of continual timeline of different authors preserved on the Alpac 2B, Alpaca Skin Row. And here we have one of the items that was found in the Kasikin tomb. Here we have a parchment scroll with hieroglyphics that we were able to translate. We're in the town Volcán and we will be going to the ancient cave and tomb of Cacique El Quibian Machia. And this is where it all began. When Marco Montezuma and his brother were digging for a well, they heard an echo. When they opened the rock slab, they found this amazing cave. This whole area was covered with rock and mud. After excavation, we were able to explore this ancient cave and tomb. As we enter this ancient tomb, I will show you some of the relics that were discovered. In this part of the cave is the tomb of the cacique. Inside, we found the sarcophagus and inside was his mummified body, which is over 2,600 years old. The sarcophagus was gilded in gold, which was an ancient practice to perfectly preserve the content inside the tomb. In the scrolls, we were able to identify the cacique's name, Machia, and where he came from. The translation of the scrolls allowed us to identify the people that followed the great cacique. And here we are at the other end of the cave. And these were some of the rocks that covered this side of the cave. Good evening. To start with, I will tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Dr. Maria Rosario, and I am an anthropologist. I specialize in the research of pre-Columbian civilization in Central America. In the ancient scrolls, the hieroglyphics tells the history of the existence of a Phoenician community living in Volcán Baru Chiriquí around 2,600 years ago. This group of Phoenicians set sail from the Middle East and landed in Panama. The ancient sarcophagus is made in an Egyptian-designed rectangular box and covered in gold. The sarcophagus was also connected to another wooden rectangular box, which is also covered in gilded gold. The layer of gold varied in thickness, from heavy sheet for the face and wings of the two-winged mat, to a thin layer of sheet of the finest gold leaf over the sarcophagus. And today I'm going to show you one of the gold artifacts that are from this from a tomb in here in the exhibition. Some of the artifacts are wakas found in the tomb date back to over 2300 years 
and the temperature in the cave is much cooler than the outside temperature and for that reason uh, and the difference of temperature is the reason that the artifacts have been preserved so well. Hello, I'm standing here on the Pan American Highway, uh, fixing to head to the Bocan where the tomb of uh, Kasi Kiki tomb is. If you go this way, about 45 minutes, you'll get the coast to Rico. Okay, we're driving up the road to Balkan Baru, also known as Volcan de Chiriqui. It is the tallest mountain in Panama. It's uh, 3,747 uh, meters, which is about 11,398 feet. At the height, it's um, because of the, the height and the width of Panama, at the very top, you can actually see the Pacific Ocean and the uh, uh, Gulf at the same time. The amazing story of the discovery of the ancient tomb of Cacique Malchia began when Marcus Montezuma, a young Nagobi man, was digging a poso or a water well on a hill and he hit a carved rock in the shape of a rectangular slab. As he hit the rock slab with his pick, it made an echo or a hollow sound. At the first, Mr. Montezuma thought that he had found an old septic tank. He then used his pick to pry open the, and lift up the rock in the slab to expose what was underneath, and to his amazement, he found the tomb. Akasike Matia. Now we're going to proceed through the tomb and let you see the opening on this end and also the opening on the other end. Alright, well on the other side of the entrance to the well, and again there's an amazing story about how the well was discovered as a young Nagobi man was digging for a well here and as he was di digging the well, a poso, um, his pick hit a rectangular stone. And behind the stone, as he hit it, there was a hollow echo. Not knowing what it was, he took his pick and he pried op open the tomb. And to much to his amazement, he discovered the tomb, a Cacique Malchi. I'm going down into the tomb now, and it's, it's quite dark as you enter into the tomb. The walls of the tomb are aligned with different statues and that represent the... Um, Calciques uh, nobles in the El Kibia. 